Library Trustees meeting uh, for uh, Wednesday, uh, June 21st uh, is uh, 6.05 p.m. And we'll start the meeting. Uh, my name is David Boucher. I'm the chairman. And Katie McGonigal, Library Director. Amy Paul, Trustee. Amy Johnson, Secretary. Nancy O'Connor, Trustee. Cindy McNutt, Vice Chair. Okay. And public comments. We have no one here, so comments. Uh, the meeting minutes. Excuse me, I'm going to close that one. Boy, you're good. <laughs> so um, just one thing um, that was brought to my attention about kind of our letterhead and some of the documents and I need to make some changes going forward as well okay. but if you look at page 9 in the bottom of the letterhead the web address is listed as www.eastlawmeadowlibrary.org it does not bring you to the library website if you type in the www part first. So it's just eastlongmeadowlibrary.org. Really? So, and that's on... Yeah. Not www. Isn't that weird? Oh, that is Correct. Weird. That's, that's weird. weird. And it? it's, this is on, I didn't realize, so it's on almost everything. So okay. we're correcting as we go forward. Really? Which you'll see, oh, I have that. to do that on some of these documents that are printed in front of you as well. This has been going on for a long time then. Correct. And... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other piece is the extension. There's different extensions that are right. being used. Right. So I'm trying to switch. I'm I'm trying to switch it all over to extension eight because okay. then that brings you to the main number, and then you can choose which extension from there. 1500. So fifteen hundred works. It's fine, but, but on the website, it's extension fifteen eleven. So it should be eight fifteen oh eight. It should be just extension oh, eight. eight because oh, when you all. call okay. the five two five fifty four hundred, yeah. it brings you yeah. to like the okay. town, and, and then extension eight should bring you to the library, okay. and then you can choose within exactly. there. Exactly. And it's so, always. I thought it was always awkward to try to get to the library. It is. No, so, that's good. So that's so. All right, that's I'm good. trying to catch it. So if you see these as we go through, yeah, we're okay. trying. I'm trying to catch those. Why that was Melanie, 15, technology 100. coordinator, who caught that. So I appreciate that's her her yeah. careful eye. Yeah. No, that's good. 1500 is like yeah. the is yeah. so yeah. is the library. Well, well, yeah. But extension eight is probably the yeah. But yeah. it doesn't give that choice when they get to the menu. It will, I think, when you call extension eight. Yeah. Then yeah, you can choose exactly, which yeah. department yeah. after you, you want to speak with. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. But again, good it, catch. That was all Melanie. She's fantastic. Good so, um, oh, good. and I think Erica gave me the extension eight piece. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. And so, thank you, Mary. Um, so, as we're going through, if you see any going forward, I'm, I know that there's one. There's going to be one on one of the documents that I did, but we'll fix it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is that it? Yeah. Other changes? Do we have to accept the Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, would someone like to make a motion? I don't, to I don't have any changes. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept, accept the, the May 17th with the uh, amended changes okay. to the letterhead. Second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, director's report. Before we get to the director's report, and I know okay. that I'm jumping ahead a little bit, no, but that's okay. I'm that's just okay. very excited to share this. Um, Michelle, uh, we have a little morning meeting most meetings. Uh, most mornings we have just a few minute check in with the staff that's here first thing in the morning. Yeah. And Michelle had shared out how excited she was that our Beanstack registrations for our summer reading program had had reached over 800. And so then I was like, that's amazing. And so I had her check on it. And as of yesterday afternoon, we have 892 participants in our wow. summer reading program in Beanstack, wow. which is 
awesome because the program started June 1st and the kickoff was June 13th. And I know we're talking about May, but I was just very excited to share. (laughs) And it's just kudos to the staff. Do you have any idea why that would happen? The the numbers were like that last year also. They were awesome. Yeah, it's really great. There's a ton of participation. Awesome. Ever since the new library opened. Yeah, the staff has been really great about communicating and helping patrons get connected and answering questions. And literally everybody is answering questions and helping. And it's a whole team And the program is very versatile, so it it, Mm -hmm. it can appeal to, it it can work into people's schedules. Exactly. Exactly. So I just wanted to, I jumped ahead a little bit. No, no, that's for, fine. That We're so glad next month, but I just wanted to share out yeah, now because great. it's really exciting. That's good. Okay, so now on to the director's report. Um, so for children's highlights, there were 41 programs, 774 program attendees. There were 187 participants with the in-house activity and 186 transaction, uh, reference transactions. And then uh, Christina Cooper joined the staff and is in the children's department. Right. And then there is a screen grab here of a Pathways for Parents program that was like a nature program, and it was very messy and very fun, and we love things like that. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, what are uh, they making? They were doing like a nature activity. It's like yeah, dirt. growing something. Yeah, it's it's just like dirt. It looks like That's what it looked like. So, so that was really like my lawn. It's not growing grass. That's right. <laughs> so for Were they tea? drinking wine? No. <laughs> no. It's like a wine no. glass. It does look that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. It's a very fun <laughs> program. Kiddos. Um, I so go. <laughs> for the teen programs, uh, there were six programs. One of them was passive. There were um, 66 attendees, and 20 of those were for the passive program. Uh, TAB is taking a break. They will resume in September. And there's art in the afternoon and chess were held during the month of May. And then a Switch video game was also held, and that was very successful. I heard a little loud, and that's how it should be, so yeah. that's fine. Uh, and there's plans to host it again in the future, so that's Great. exciting. What is passive for future? Can we start spelling out the TAB? It took me a second to figure oh, out sure. the Oh, sure. advisory meant. board? I know what it means, yeah. though, but it... it but, uh, a lot it of just might be down. nicer for sure. us to be able to write it out. It would. For people like me. You well, got it. Yeah, I, yeah. I can never figure it out. What, 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 I'm not sure. It's teen advisory. Oh, yeah. 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 What does passive mean? Yeah, I agree with you. Passive means it's, um, it's like almost like an activity that you engage with on your own. You don't have to have directed instruction. You don't have to have. Okay, so it's self-directed. Exactly. Okay. And it's kind of a available for a longer period of time. It's not like you just, necessarily just have that. to come that one hour. So you fit it into what you can fit in. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So for the adult highlights, there were eight programs, 87 program attendees, 99 reference transactions. The study rooms uh, had 265.5 hours of use, and there were 29 requests that were unfulfilled. So 29 folks wanted to use the room, but it was already wow. in use. a lot. Um, we had the Battle of the Librarians I trivia challenge know, with the Soros Library it. in Longmeadow, and Amy was there. Oh, so thanks for coming to support. Oh, it was very fun. Well, I wanted to go to that. It, it was, was very fun. fun. It was a great turnout. And we um, won. And we won. We won. Yeah. Oh, wow. So That's we're hoping to do it again funny. next year. It was very competitive. Decisively, I would Decisively. <laughs> I'll let you say that. Yeah. Decisively. Um, wow. Um, you and, probably studied. Uh, it, was, it was total like, who, team. Who was the person who made Amanda amazing. She was she, Amanda, who worked here, yeah. Yeah. took a professional position in Longmeadow, yeah. and Phenomenal. worked well with Maura. She did great. She was a great MC. She really kept it moving. Oh. Um, just had little tips and insights in between questions, or shared kind of personal things. And, they, and then she picked. Did all the questions? Yeah, so she and Maura worked together to figure out all the questions and the the game format. The questions were great. Like, there was no way you could study for it. It was hard. There were hard questions. They were difficult, but also a variety of topics. Now, was this, what what were they, was there a topic, the library? So there were, like, ten different categories. Like, Jeopardy? Kind, it was more like Family Feud, I guess, than Jeopardy. Family Feud. But without the polling, though, so it was more like a trivial pursuit, like a oh. variety of different categories. Categories, oh. okay. Um, probably more like Jeopardy, I guess. You think? Than yeah. Just in terms of having the different categories. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was fun. It was a blast. And then you yeah. got points if you got it correct. Uh-huh. 
And you buzzed yeah, in? Yeah, it, it was a little confusing for... <laughs> the point structure was confusing for me, but I was sitting right next or behind Mora, and... Oh, so you could see. I was, I was keeping track. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there was a spreadsheet involved. So now, did you have to buzz in? Yeah. Yes, but that's where it got complicated, because... We were all buzzing in before the question was really finished being, and it was hard to figure out who was buzzing in first. And yeah. so, but for next year, we'll tweak it. There's, there's, yeah. there's it was, always room for that. Was one of the yeah, nice things that. actually. It was it was like, Amanda? Is that her name? Yes. Did a really good job of emphasizing this is the first annual, yeah. and yeah. we'll take that for next time. We'll do better next. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, no, and, that, and, and it's, it was, yeah, and it's only enough. planned for our two libraries. Well, I think uh, it, is there room for growth? I think so. It was this was spearheaded by stores, and I think they want to branch out yeah. to other local mm. it, libraries. It's such as well, a cool concept. It was fun. It was I, absolutely I just think a it's cool. It was a hoot, and you're yeah. all having such a good time. It was, it was, yeah. it was really So, cool. how many were on a team? It was like six and six. Okay. Yeah. So were these staff members? With, mm -hmm. with they had to take an IQ test members. before yeah. they could be on the team. <laughs> it, was, it was Liam, Melanie, Erica, Tammy, Kay, and myself. Oh. And then Mora did the, the, the spreadsheet, the questions, um, points. Yeah. And then on the other side, it was Amanda was the MC. MC. And then it was Carly, Carrie, Pat, um... Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. It was like a month ago. No, that's okay. That's all right. I'm trying to think who else was there. It just really gave us sense. Ronan, of that vibe Ronan, of the and then there was the um, one more, and it's going to come to me. And then Jean subbed in also, so it was. Oh, fun. she did. Mm -hmm. It was nice. I'm like, trying to remember who was sitting. Yeah, Paige. Yeah. Paige was the other person. I'm, like trying to like visualize who was oh, anywhere. So yeah. it was really fun, and it was it was a good mix really of questions. So so you, so you did it, and and Jean did some. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. So we kind of rotated around. So that was really fun. So uh, there's that highlight. And you're, then and you you you're brave. We're sorry we missed you're it. You're brave to do that. <laughs> I had the kids. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone really had fun. Um, that was good. And was there an audience? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, wow. <laughs> there was there were refreshments. It, oh, was, yeah. like it was like a full-on program. Oh, it was, wow. They had their popcorn maker out. Really? And they, yeah, oh, it was wow. festive. It was fun. We'll have to make that next year. Yeah, next yeah. year, Nance, yeah. we're going. Yes. All right. Well, I'm hoping to host it here next year. So oh, that's oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, okay, so author Michael Tujis. Uh, was here on May 15th to talk about his new book, uh, Extreme Survival. The talk was well received with 40 attendees. Hmm. For technology programming and highlights, there are 3,276 Constant Contact subscribers, which was the same as last month. Uh, there were four programs, 19 attendees, and the bi-monthly tech help sessions were still included in the evening session and library in the go. Uh, we do have a volunteer that offers ancestry training using the library's online resources, and that pr program continues to go well with compliments from staff and patrons. For tax services, 631 items were added to, and 607 items were deleted from the collection during the month of May. As we come to the close of the fiscal year, tax services continues to add and remove items from the collection. There's a lot of collaboration between the tech services department and the purchasers, and we get many compliments from the community on the quality and quantity of resources. I had three people actually come up to me within a week to oh, really? give compliments about um, the collection, mm -hmm. right. which was really nice. Yeah, and it's pretty much in balance too. Mm -hmm. So you're not you're not like squeezing things in. It's good, like my closet. Yeah. <laughs> so I worked with Kristen, who is the tech services librarian, to complete the CWMR's cataloging strategic needs assessment survey. Uh, the survey was part of the CWMR strategic plan for FY23 action items, and a strategic needs assessment around cataloging services offered to member libraries is part of the CWMR's membership. Hmm. For circulation, 12,829 items were circulated during the month of May. There were 52 new patron registrations, 165 reference transactions, and the door count was 9,142. Hmm. For town community outreach, on May 17th, there were two staff members that attended the Willie Ross School for the Deaf Community Partnership Recognition event for the work-study program between Willie Ross and the library. Mm. And then um, I met with Bill Kaplan of the East Longmeadow Rotary Club to discuss their continued support and donations to the library as part of their monthly speaker series. 
the Rotary Club donates a book to the collection each time they have a speaker present at their luncheons. This donation will continue through 23-24. Uh, the library and community greatly appreciate this annual donation as it promotes and encourages literacy, the love of reading within our community. Uh, the Children's Department and Tech Services Department work in collaboration to add these donations into the collection. Um, the library does receive donations from community members and it's it's very generous and it's very nice and you know whether it's an individual or a group that makes these donations it really does contribute to benefit all of us so um, it's we're very fortunate to be in such a supportive community for professional development staff had the opportunity to and are encouraged to attend professional development trainings and some of the topics from the past month were no before technology security training provided by the IT department conflict of interest training, mass library systems effective strategies to improve teamwork, preventing discrimination, excuse me, preventing discrimination and harassment in the workplace and Commonwealth catalog. The staff led a summer reading program all staff training on May 18th to review the summer reading program including information on programming, Beanstack and the kickoff event. And the tech coordinator led several staff trainings in May on both Google Drive and we got a, a, a button maker, like a literal button oh, yeah, yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. And so um, there was a yeah, staff weird. training. We used to have um, the, the button maker. I probably still do. Back in the day. I wouldn't know yeah. how to use so, it. So uh, it was a good training. So for website and social media, during the month of May, the technology coordinator added patron registration fillable forms, uploaded new policies, and created underlying pages with full text, created new section of online resources to highlight government and state resources, um, created a summer reading page in collaboration with the head of children's and the head of adult services. Uh, Melanie also created a custom widget to allow for custom sidebar on specific pages, changed the sidebar on search result, and implemented a new sidebar for the new summer reading page. Melanie was very busy making a lot wow. of updates for the website. <laughs> so um, all to the benefit of patrons and staff. Everybody. So there's a, there was a lot that was added and kind of moved around to just make it a little bit more user-friendly and efficient. Um, many staff worked together on the summer reading page, uh, program, excuse me, including web posts and pages, social media and email blasts, and the Beanstack challenges grouped by age. So when you go to Beanstack, to it's like an online platform to do your logging of your hours, your reading or listening, and to complete activities and write reviews, things like that. Um, these challenges, is what we call them, are tiered by kind of age range. So there's a children's, there's a teen, and then there's an adult program. So um, it is very catered to each range, and there's a lot of really great activities and opportunities for folks to participate So the with. Summer Reading Club is a team effort with all the departments, really. Yes. That's great. Yeah. And so on the next page, you're going to see a screenshot of what some of this looks like on the website for some of the changes that were made. Um, so building updates. I'm still awaiting installation of the art hanging system. It's oh. going to happen one of these days. Um, we are in the process of installing additional security cameras in the building. And I'm still looking to purchase staff shirts, uh, a tablecloth, and tote bags for community outreach events. So that they will have the East Long Meadow Public Library logo will be more easily identifiable when we are out in the community. And um, if you haven't had a chance, please take a poke through the building and see all of the decorations that have been put up for summer reading because the whole building is decorated and it really looks fun and inviting for everybody. Awesome. And then coming up, we're going to review the student trustee advisor application and role and responsibilities, and then we're going to review the meeting room policy. I'm not, I don't think either of them are fully ready to like approve for tonight, okay. but this is our opportunity to, See to review them and make some more suggestions before we, you know, move forward. Um, because this was so intensive, yeah. I pushed out the study room. Okay. Policy, so hopefully we can get to that next month. But when we get to the meeting room policy, I did a lot of communication with the town manager's office and more DD from Mass Board of Library Commissioners to make sure that we're on the right page for that. And then just a reminder that our next meeting is July 19th. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> and is there a reason why there, that? there might be a conflict with. Um, well, there's. I mean, we'll look there's, a conflict, there's a conflict. There's a conflict. So, so how would we resolve that conflict? 
but we have the summer concerts, Nancy, all the summer. Oh, that's right. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, I so, see. So uh, we'll take a look at the personnel and see. In two places at once. Is well, and I can't expect that people would expect them to. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, you're meeting, you're here. You're <laughs> yes. supposed to do a meeting, so it's, yeah. yes. But I, I don't know how solvable it is. Well, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Yep, yeah, but thank so you. We'll, that's we'll, okay. So we'll. we'll if, that, if that's what comes to that, right? Great. Find and that's, that's, volunteers and cover them. Right? That's good. Yes. Just leave the camera. We'll hit record. We can do that. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> so, okay, so student advisory. Yeah, remote control. <laughs> I, mean, I don't do much when I'm here. You're, you're, ha you're oh. having so much fun. You do a lot. Always enjoyable. Yeah. Always. So, in your director's report, down at the bottom, it's supposed to be extension yeah. eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember how we talked about like, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I noticed that on the new trustee, it is hyphen corrected. In some places, Except it's. For the w -W -W. Yeah, see, there we go. But here on mine, oh, that's oh. this one. Okay, see, so look. here I caught it here. Oh, I got yeah. the website, yeah, but not the. Yeah. Oh, There's around. a lot of moving parts. I'm trying. <laughs> I am trying. It's okay, we're always good at teams. That's what, you know, this is why we're a good team. <laughs> I get the gist of it. <laughs> Okay, so this next up, um, David, we're good to move on, you said? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the next up, this is the student trust, the top set that you have is the student trustee advisor role and responsibilities. Right. And then the application form. So this is what I have been given. Okay, so this is what it currently looks like. It's okay, this is the, the yes, current, current one. The current one. Right. And then below that, next up, is kind of a suggested, some suggested edits. But I want your input first, and then once I have that, and we make some of these changes, and then I will bring it to the town manager's office okay. to have them review. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I, I just wonder, do they get community credit for? So that's it? what I want to talk about in my draft. Okay. Um, so if you go to like your next set of pages, you'll see <coughs> one more. Keep going. It's going to look like this. Indeed. Yes. This one. Yeah. I've already found a couple of other changes I want to make. Okay. Is there a, is there a um, conduct unbecoming? Is there a definition of what conduct unbecoming is? Is I'm, that just common sense would tell you that I, it was? The, and the town has yeah. like um, a, 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 a in the employee a code of conduct. Thank you. Oh, okay. So the town itself has it. So I would assume that that that. Okay. Student trustee advisor would fall we'll under that. Fall. Maybe that should be something. I mean, I don't know that it'll ever be a problem. But this is why we're having this conversation. Exactly. So we could say something to the effect of, you know, the town's 
code of conduct. Because that's Do the first thing. Do we have to abide by the town's code of conduct? Pardon? Like as trustees, just I even more so. so. Yeah, more so. The town. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't okay. hear what you said. I just want to make sure. I couldn't remember if we were also required to abide by the code of conduct for the town employees. And if we are, then it does make sense to reference it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, so as you can see kind of in my draft changes, there's not a whole ton. No. Um, but I, I took out, you asked about that community service requirement, I actually crossed that out because I don't want it to come across as though the team that does become the student trustee advisor, yeah. right. like they don't have to do this for service credit. Right. Yeah. Like it's not a requirement mm -hmm. right. that, does that make sense? Yes. Some, yeah. Some teens just might want to volunteer right. and no, they no, don't no. need the service credit. No, yeah. I know, but if they want them, they can get them and if they don't want them, they don't have to. Is so that that's not automatic. If you become, you, you have to apply or request. I don't know how they do the community credits. I mean, do they? Yeah, have to I think it would be coordinated with the high school. With the high school, yeah. And if they say, can this be part of my? Then I'd say yes. Would that be up to the you, the director, and the high school? So uh, it, 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 would it be dependent, I think I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. it would be dependent upon whether or not the school... This whether is, that individual is, team this, needs it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. whether or not that. doing this is an eligible right. um, <laughs> activity with the school policy, I would assume. Because that's who makes the determination. Would, We're not wouldn't the ones who get to say that this qualifies for the high school's program. The yeah. High school yeah. So, so, so it really doesn't need to be in our policy. Right. So. No. right. Okay. No. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's um, good. No. When, when the student, um, the student trustee or advisor leaves, when does the application process begin? At the beginning of the school year, or so that's what we all have to figure out. Okay, because Julia was the first one, it, exactly, yeah. and can I they don't can have. They? I have this. You don't so, have any applications, and they haven't been given to the school. No, can, can so, they? Can that? Oh, sorry. No, please. Okay, can that? Like Julia, if she wanted to continue next year, would she have to reapply, or would she just be reappointed, or how would that work? Um, so according to the, what the current advisor um, role and responsibilities, it it's, you, it's like a one or could be extended to a two-year yeah. term. Right. If, it, if okay. you started so in junior, you can get as a senior. Then. But you have to be a high school student in East Long Meadow. That's what this is saying. Mm -hmm. So, and I also took that oh, part I, I, out sorry. that they I, had to I be... I didn't see that. I didn't, I didn't... So that's another piece is... Rising high school, so under responsibilities, rising high school juniors or seniors that are residents of the town of East Longmeadow and hold an active, that needs to be changed. CW Myers library card are invited to apply to be a student trustee advisor. I don't think they have to go to East Longmeadow High School. That's what I'm was wondering. Right? What if they... What if they use the library, but they, they attend a private school? Exactly. Like, uh, or, yeah. or, or a... Yeah. Right. They had, so I didn't want to. So as, as long as they're a high school student and they live in East Long Meadow, right? As opposed yeah. to being an East Long Meadow, it high doesn't school have to be student. the high school, right? right. Exactly. exactly. Or they could be being homeschooled. Exactly. So I didn't mm -hmm. want to necessarily restrict it to I, I only East should. Long Meadow high school students. Yeah. So that's no, why that's, that's good. there that's, was that little change there. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, I was that's looking good. down at the last paragraph in the first sentence, um, and it says. Is considered to be a representative of the community. Is it just be representative? Oh, take yes, take that as well. I was because it had been all plural. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to. Just, so thank you for catching yeah. that. I was trying to make it singular because I don't think we need more than one. One tr advisor. Yeah. Correct. Right. So I was trying to make it singular from plural. But see, the the advisor leaves at the end of the school year. Right. And then to get a replacement advisor. They're really not in school over the summer, so that puts us into the fall. So you're kind of without right. one for maybe one or two months. Right. Mm -hmm. So what if you begin the process before the the current one expires? So like instead right. of like in April or May, 
if they're leaving in June. They won't be right. here. Because I do be think the June meeting. there could be overlap, right, between right. the right. outgoing and, and the incoming, incoming and that where they could thing. kind of train or discuss yeah. with yeah. each other. That yes. Would be fine. And they can give their insight as to how it was beneficial to them or mm -hmm. what they wish they had done mm -hmm. or whatever. But I think it's a spring process that needs to have it started. It, that, that I agree with you. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise you'd have this high hiatus. Well, then yeah. you're really not going to get somebody on until board until the fall. October. But maybe. I think that for this year, I think that works because we needed to have some time to look at this document. Oh, sure. And right. then bring it and have that, you know, I want the town managers right. to look at this to make sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, Julia will just have Julia's to come back. not going to be here because no. she's no. going to college. Right. Yeah. Right there. Right. And so she does stuff. She's we have on to, a road trip. We have to. She does a road trip. That's <laughs> right. Oh, without. Oh. <laughs> And you don't know nothing. <laughs> so, and then for the next document, see, I already made a mistake. This needs to be right aligned. Which one? When you, when did you make a mistake? Um, up at the top. Like, there's a couple changes already I want to make, so I want to right align that. Oh, 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 yeah. oh yeah. 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 Okay. And it's then, really crowding into the header. Correct. And then under purpose and role, the second sentence. Student trustee, student trustee advisors <coughs> will. It should be the student trustee advisor. Oh yeah, not plural. Yeah. Right. And yeah, then, I got it. Yeah. Yep. And then in responsibilities, where it says C W um, slash Mars, it should just be C W space Mars. But Mars should be in all capital letters. I get it. Yeah. Capital right. letters. Yeah. Did we? Sorry. Along with the header, mm -hmm. you're gonna put this down. No, I'm going to move centered? it. Centered? Is that how we're Scoot doing all policies now? I couldn't find that. Just how yeah. it matches. Yeah. Um, I couldn't find it. It also doesn't either. have to say East Long Middle Public Library at I the top because the header it. says East Long Middle Public Library. Oh, yeah, you're right. What did I do for the other policies? I'm trying to yeah. <laughs> Where am I? Anyway, just I got a policy coming up. I got yeah. another one coming up. Yeah, I think I put it at the top. Yeah, I put it at the top. Yep. Okay, and then, and if if in the event we should have to discontinue the student advisor because they don't come to the meetings or whatever, um, then you would go to the high school to have people reapply for the remaining of the year. Just do well, then they would, them. or they would start then their term for one or two years yeah. from that date. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so we actually. <laughs> Go ahead. There does need to be flexibility in the length of the term, to your point. So right. it says, I like the way it's worded. So I do it too. says, rising yeah. high school juniors or seniors. Yeah. So that would right. account for if we did have to end someone's term, right. we don't have to have like a two year. Exactly. We have that flexibility. Right. That's, what, that's what you would kind of like so to I avoid. So I think that's we why we'll, we can keep it a little bit. Flexible. I think I like that too. Which I usually hate in policies, but in this case, oh, <laughs> yes, because okay. then it gets a little like, well, you can argue it. It should be black and white, right? Yeah. Oh, always, always black and white. Unless there's a little flexibility. <laughs> um, I did want to ask though, you crossed out activities. They are though expected to participate in the teen advisory board. Which is not then considered an activity. I just I don't know why it was there. I don't see that. So like, it could be the student trustee advisor will participate in teen advisory board activities. I don't. The really teen know. advisory board. It does make sense. And board of library trustee meetings. Because we're not going to require them to go to all of the activities. No. So I do agree, but we do expect them to go, go to the teen advisory board. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For as long, yes. Thank you for that. So that's, that. Okay. So it should just end after meetings. Right. 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 Just how Katie did it. Yeah. Was With a yeah. period. <laughs> There's a period. Oh, we missed it. <laughs> I missed the period. I got, I got that one. Okay. I did not, I don't think really make any changes other than just kind of formatting for the application. Right. Um, but I would run this past HR as well. If, yeah. If the town yeah. managers think that yeah. that's necessary because I want to figure out exactly what information does the town require that we need for the applicant. Um, 
But how do you feel about these questions? Oh, I was going to ask, I think I interrupted you earlier. Was there something I, you wanted to add? Or ask? No, I think whatever, okay. uh, it, it's been answered. I'm not sure I heard right at the end. Oh, excuse me. What? Um, so I would want to, once we're kind of finalized on our end with this, I would run this by the town manager and have them take a look at it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then yeah, possibly HR with the town yeah, manager's right. input to yeah, figure yes. out exactly what information, right. contact right. information is required. And then you're yeah. probably and there might be, want to there have might be something else they need mm -hmm. that, that or they would like to see that we don't have on here. And, mm -hmm. if, and you might want to have, um, this is the application form, right? Mm -hmm. No. Shouldn't there be on the application form, does it say what date it's due by and... No, because I think it's just rolling. Huh? It's yeah, just it's kind of a rolling just to, yep, you know, until we fill it. But it doesn't become open. It's open all the time. In other words, anybody can apply any time they want. I don't know if this is posted anywhere at this point. It's not that I know of. Well, unless the you, high you school understand, person I, I guess what I'm... Right. I'm, oh, we just add date in there for somebody to put would, the date know, that if, they... If there should be a date. date I mean, um, the application for the... for the You know, the date um, they handed the application. The year of 2024 must be in by... Our, you don't know that yet. I don't know. I, I mean... I, I do. I see. I think I understand, yeah, I, I what, understand you're what you're saying, is, too. but I think that we would ask that Mr. Marcarini at the high school include a apply by in the posting itself, as opposed to the in the form. policy yeah. or into the application. Because it seems to me that would be something we would want them to also. But it might be good to have the date that the, of Although the application. It's all high school students. We would probably post it too. So. I, I, it's going to get I, posted. My my guess is that it's going to get posted in multiple places. Oh, yeah, once we, so. I, and I mean, the only reason I'm I'm saying it is if I'm a student or if I, anybody, if I'm filling out a form, I'm going to look. When is this due by? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you 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 know what I mean. Right. Is it a first come, right. first served? And that's you know, that would be my first, That would be filled. one of the first things I would wonder is how much time do I have to do this? When do I have to get this in by? Right. And so here's a question that I have for you all. Okay. Whoa. Are there interview questions? Because it says that applicants will be invited to interview. Okay. Well, yeah, I, 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 I well, think so. Well, you have a couple, right? You have two questions. And I, I don't really love that first one. Well, uh, yeah, that's... I just think it needs to be reworded I think, bit, you but. know what, I think if you're going to use that, instead of that being the first question, Switch it. Why do you want to serve as a teen advisor? And then perhaps the last thing. Right. I, I, I mean. Um, That's probably all you need, really. Why do you want to serve? Or just why do you want to serve as a. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I think you're right, Dave. Really. Yeah, why do you want to serve as but, a. Because why do you feel you'd be yeah. an asset? Well, why do you want to serve? I think that your reasoning for why you want to serve would tell you whether yeah. or not they would be an asset to, I don't know, it's sort of redundant like in a way, but it doesn't question. sound too personal. <laughs> that's well, that's a good point. What was that? Is it like a job? Like, well, we're interviewing, we have an application, yeah. should we be asking job interview type questions? Yeah. Well, and is it done? The kids, I don't know. Yes, but then, the, you know, it's they're representing, know, they're representing, it is. that kind of, we're looking for, what the, what the role should be <clears throat> is this teen is coming in to kind of represent the teen, not all the teen population, but, but to kind of represent, look, right. what are the teens looking for, do they have program suggestions, do they have right. outreach ideas, yes. well, what's wouldn't, happening? Wouldn't that be addressed here, why do you want to serve as a trustee or advisor? And then whatever their reasons are, mm -hmm. I would think that, Right. I mean, do they have to have, I, I feel like maybe I understand we should. what you're saying about that, that question, how do you feel, what, how mm -hmm. do you feel what, you, you would say, be like, what skills or qualifications do you, yeah. do you see? Or what are your that, experiences? That will, will benefit uh, can you, the, can like, you the community, our community done. library. Yeah. Right. Something. Right. Or. 
does this does personal. this person have any connection to the library already and right. what is it right but and don't you think in a way why would sort of yeah in, in a way question? it's redundant um, yeah. but I, I think that's something that human resources would have a bit more expertise about you know so mm -hmm. they might have um, some suggestions and and if you know, if you only get one applicant or you get ten applicants, you'd want a way to mm -hmm. to that who is yeah, going to be winnow it. Yeah. What do we have on the regular trustee form? Should we just they do, use I, that? we just if I remember, we just had to tell why yeah. why we wanted to be a trust well right, a one paragraph the, thing. The, uh, so what it should, our, no, most of it was what what the first one? Huh? Yeah. Why do you think you would make a so good trustee? Yeah, that, yes. I think that's essentially as so my. We would don't want to make it harder than being a trustee, I mean, right? I feel like it should be the same or maybe easier. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I you know what? That's a. I think you're right, but then again, the the student has less um, experience than any adult. Uh, well, that's not necessarily true. I mean, Unless there may be students who have a lot more experience than all of us put together in living life. I mean, but but I don't know. I think they are sort of. I don't think. I think the why do you want to serve as a student trustee should be the first question. Yeah, I only too. because it's not. It's, it's the other one makes you like. It's like judgmental. Right. I just. I would. I, I would love rather that ask. First one. Yeah. <laughs> I would rather ask, like, what are your experiences with the East Long Meadow Public Library? Or yes, how, yes. How has or do you have any personal experiences that you, in relationship to a library? Yeah, oh, or it doesn't have that, to be East yeah, Long Meadow. Meadow. It could be just yes. a, a library. Yes, you know, or, or, or reading materials, books and re other reading materials that you feel would have, um, would be... Um, of value to being a student trustee advisor or something like that. Does the freedom to read statement give you chills? <laughs> if yes, <laughs> yeah, you found the right place. <laughs> Check. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> this day. Oh. Yeah, that's the thing. But yeah. e even on on the reference part, it said. Um, Please include references who can attest to your communication skills and dedication to community service. So that all uh, in itself could almost be turned into a question. And then, and you know what? That's do you now? Again, looking at this, okay. And you, and you, you don't. I think in a way we. This is my perspective. In a way, I think you would want to open it up to students that never do anything. Because this automatically, if I were in high school, I would <laughs> look at that and say, "Well, I'm not, I'm not going I can't to, do that. you know." Yeah, I, I mean, think we should actually take out that, that second sentence. sentence. You know, they can decide who. Because they want just for references them. would be enough. What yeah. are your references? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't decide. know. That's my feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the piece that in the previous, right. where I was like, I don't think that we need to have that. You know, community service requirement. So, no, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes because, that a good you know, connection. Think back when you were a high school student. I don't know about you, but yeah, because that's like I a question thinking almost, almost like an interview question. To tell you the truth, I mean, unless reference. you had a, you were really goal oriented. You know what college you want to go to, and you know what you need to get into that. But I don't know the average student. Boy, I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> mm -mm. Okay. Great. Thanks, everybody. Any other no, I thoughts, think comments? Great. That was great. Thank yeah. you very much for your input. So I will rework this, rework and then I will then, yeah. bring it on to the next step. Yeah, okay. okay. The library card number is on here. So. <laughs> Do they really have to have their parent or guardian sign the form? Just curious. Because they're a minor. I don't remember signing my son's. Applications for me. <laughs> he forged your name. <laughs> he lost it. <laughs>
Well, I, I don't know if, 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 I mean, I know life has changed drastically, but my, my parents had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they just no. didn't. I mean, they, yeah. I always did good in school, and that was, I came home, home and they told me, or the street lights nearby, or, <laughs> yeah. Mm. I mean, when I, my mother would like, would say, my father was always working, but with student, you know, when you'd have those conferences, teacher conferences, she'd say, well, why do we have to go? I know you're doing okay. Oh. It's, 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 it's a, I think it's a different world today, really. Yeah, it is. Okay, what do we have? New business, open meeting law training. Yes, so... Have you all been receiving the open meeting law information from MDLC? It's part of your trustee emails. Yes. Um, if you have not watched some of these videos, yeah. I, I don't know how, um, I don't know if you have requirements to, on your side, so I guess that's my question for you. Um, I think the only requirement that I know of was the conflict of interest. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There it is. I gotta do that. I gotta do that. I right. didn't do it. Oh, okay. I, I, I did um, it. What? The, the it was June um, first. Yeah, no, well, you better. I'm I, telling you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be a teen advisor. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Did you email Jeannie? What? Did you email Jeannie? No. You should email Jeannie. Okay. Okay. Um, so all of this is. Um, I want to make sure everyone is aware of these public meetings. There is a lot going on with that right now. Um, there was a change. Um, there was like this Barron case. Are you guys familiar with this? The what? No. Barron versus Kalenda. No. Um, and so this was from Maura Didi. We fielded a few questions about the recent SJC ruling on Barron versus Kalenda. And I wanted to share some information we've learned with library directors and trustees. So this was an email dated um, April 3rd. And since, um, so in, it's, there's a policy requiring civil language during the public comment period of a select board meeting. So there was this law, there was this ruling that came out on Barron versus Kalenda about like open meetings and public comments. And it was, there were some really helpful trainings that were sent out and I have on the sheet and in the email that I had sent you, there is a direct link that will bring you to both of these trainings, which I really recommend that you watch. Oh, okay. Because if somebody comes in here, if a person from the public comes in and wants to join the meeting, join the meeting, they are welcome to do that. And it's about what language you as trustees can use with that public person uh, and how you would respond or do not respond in that situation yes, exactly. so that and then okay. there's this realize it was yes because it's not a question and answer they can come in and make their public comment right and that's that and then that's that and then it's, it's, yeah. you do not have to like come, come you do not that. have to engage but once you do then you do do yeah. you know what i mean yes. so like then it's expected if you, if you are if you are commenting to <clears throat> person one comes in then it's going to be expected that you are then going to comment or go back and forth with person two, and that is not what the public okay, comment yeah. that, section is for. No. So they can make their comment. I love to make comments. But then you you listen, you well, take notes, you know but I then do. you do not need to respond. So okay. this is really, I really recommend that you watch these now, trainings. So how do we get okay, to this? Is, this is, I'm looking at this, and I can't Yes, this is a it. screenshot of what it is, yes, I but I can send it to you in email format. Oh, okay. have this. Okay. This is one of the attachments. That okay. I yeah. Yeah. All right. And yeah. so, so, and how so do the we, web address is at the top. How do we get to the link from you? Yep. Okay. Okay. And that's that. This is yes. the WMA yes. org resource. So, so is that how we would get to it right there if we don't okay. find your yes. email? Yes. All right. All right. Um, and so then there was. Uh, one of the trainings that I watched was regulating comments at public meetings, the legal and operational perspective, and then the other one was regulating comments at public meetings, de-escalation strategies for uncivilized yeah, that, discourse. Yeah, yeah. I highly that recommend, good. and I would watch the legal and operational perspective first, first and, then, and then do the de-escalation second. Okay. Okay, because there were some changes. Um, Oh, we didn't realize. Mm -hmm. didn't realize. Yeah, there's a lot going on. So yeah, that's why I, I wanted to make I, sure I, that everyone was very well aware of that because if somebody comes in, well, and I think it would be very interesting, right? And they could be, they could be very dis 
uh, they can be dissatisfied with something. And but then you have to be prepared for how you're going to respond to that. Right. Yeah. Right. Does that make sense? And you might yeah. want you might want to think about it before you have any response, rather than. Yeah. Really. I it, mean, it might be right, a nature you know, reaction. So, right. <laughs> yes. So. Um, mm -hmm. So no, like please watch that. Take it, I'm but there, there are a lot of emails mm -hmm. that are coming out from Moradidi, from the MBLC, that are yeah. going to this trustees. You should be receiving those emails. If you are not, you need to let me know. But you should be getting trustee emails sent yes. to you. Yes. Um, and I just updated we everyone's were, I was contact just so many. I just did. There are a lot. There are a yeah. lot. There are, yeah. And but, I just thought, oh, it's just not really for me. And, yeah. um, but they are. They are. <laughs> they are. Okay. So that's why I'm following I'll, try, I'll, to try, sure. to, I'll try to be more Thank attentive you. to it. Sorry. And I will just keep sending so that, it your way. See, yeah. that's one of the problems with, I don't know about you with emails, oh, but I, I get so, so many, many emails that I just flip through. I me don't, too. Yeah. So, so, but now you have it. And we're so, sorry, we'll I'm, try to get more on it. Yeah. Yep, and that's that's what we're doing. We're gonna watch okay. it and we're gonna Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. But I don't know if you get emails from Mora saying this is required. I I I don't know if there's something think, separate no. that's sent no, out. So that's why I don't say they're required. No, okay. No, I don't I don't remember that. that. Okay. Yeah. I think required so, would have got my attention. I think so too. <laughs> um Okay, so well, yeah, there's so that. Because you kind of put things into categories. categories yeah. i got to do 100 things this week. Right. right. And then I'm, you, you put it in your mind, I'm going to come back to mm. this. But you don't. But if you, they say it's a requirement, then, it's sort then of they have, gonna, yes. you're going to look at it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so to kind of go along with that, the um, there was an updated... Uh, trustee pocket guide. Yeah. So I ordered Ooh. that for everybody. So you all have the updated oh, yeah. one. Oh, this is so I can throw the other ones away. Then. This well, is this updated? is like the this is this is the oh, okay. this is the one they just sent out. So this is the pocket guide. But there is, I think, like the full. I have a couple pocket guides. Yeah. So I'll keep, keep this, this one. one. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's next? What's next? Uh... So, oh, that's the new trustee checklist. Okay. Massachusetts Library Organization. I don't think I got any of that stuff. What's that, Nancy? From t ten important things you should have. Did you did you get any introductory information as a trustee? Um, some of what's in this trustee pocket guide yeah. mm -hmm. may not apply to our board okay. because. Different boards, depending or an on advisory board. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So there might be some differences. Right. And before we were more than an advisory. Board. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. So there might be some things that may or may not pertain to our yes. particular board based on. We did budget before. Yeah, we did. We did a lot more before, yeah. and and now we we know our role better. <laughs> okay. Right? Yes. Don't we know our role yes. better? Yes. Okay. Now what's next? Uh, Massachusetts Library Organization stand with librarians against censorship and intolerance press release. Yes. Um, so this was sent out on June 1st. Um, okay. This is a joint press release with the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, the Massachusetts Library Association, the Massachusetts Library System, and the Massachusetts School Library Association. Um, Would you like me to read it? I would be so happy for you to read that. Thank it's you. very disturbing. Yes. Uh, book challenges in Massachusetts school and public libraries have quadrupled in just one year, mirroring the surge the American Library Association has reported nationwide. Challenges here reflect a national agenda that targets specific members of our communities, including LGBTQ plus individuals and people of color. The Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, the Massachusetts Library Association, the Massachusetts Library System, and the Massachusetts School Library Association support library staff's efforts to ensure free, equal, and open access to information guaranteed to everyone, regardless of age or citizenship status, under the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. We oppose censorship and intolerance 
uphold the American Library Association's Library Bill of Rights and affirm. Massachusetts Public Library staff are acting in accordance with State Law Chapter 78, Section 33, when they develop collections that reflect the breadth of the human experience, which is both diverse and interconnected. The law states, the Board of Trustees of a free public library in any city or town shall establish a written policy for the selection of library materials and use of materials and facilities in accordance with standards adopted by the American Library Association. Massachusetts public library staff cannot be dismissed for providing diverse library collections. State Law Chapter 78, Section 33 states, No employee shall be dismissed for the selection of library materials when the selection is made in good faith and in accordance with the approved policy adopted pursuant to the provisions of this section. Massachusetts librarians are professionals and educators, many of whom have master's degrees in library and information science. They are parents, former students, neighbors, teachers, and contributing members of our communities. They include people who identify as LGBTQ+, and as people of color working for inclusion to ensure all people feel seen and heard. Licensed school library teachers match students with age-appropriate materials to foster the love of reading and instill curiosity for academic learning. Important, since reading ability is linked to high school graduation rates. Attacks on members of our communities targeted at marginalized peoples are more than book challenges. They are acts of intolerance and exclusion intended to silence diverse voices and views while holding fast to homogeneous viewpoints by historically dominant voices. These acts jeopardize everyone's access to learn from different perspectives and limit the opportunities available for those isolated in their experience to realize they are not alone. In Massachusetts, we have a history of uniting behind what we know is right. Massachusetts was first in the nation to offer free library services to all. Today, our libraries fulfill a vision spelled out in our state constitution. Wisdom and knowledge, as well as virtue, diffused generally among the body of the people being necessary for the preservation of their rights and liberties. And as these depend on spreading the opportunities and advantages of education in the various parts of the country and among the different orders of the people. Join us in supporting libraries. Next, we have meeting room policy. Yes. Okay. So, in your packet, um, is my draft version. I'm not ready for us to. Like, this is for us to draft, kind of, right? this is the draft yes. still. Yeah, yep. yes. So I just wanted to kind of read it and go through it with you all and then get your input so then I can move on to finalizing. Yeah. Okay. The footer is perfect. The what? Got it. Nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's hope it's on every page though. <laughs> Because like it got cut off a little bit, so it might not actually be on any of the subsequent pages. Because oh, oh, take oh, the win. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, introduction. The East Long Meadow Public Library's meeting rooms are used primarily for library programs. When not occupied, these rooms are available for public use by application for charitable, civic, cultural, educational, or intellectual activities. The use of the meeting room space must always be subordinate to the paramount need to provide a safe, peaceful, and respectful environment in which to read and study. Meeting room facilities shall be made available on an equitable basis, regardless of the beliefs or affiliations of individuals or groups requesting use. Meeting rooms available. Community room. Now, if you have, um, if you have the current policy, I've, I've made a lot of changes from the current policy. Um, 
with input from, again, the town managers, mm -hmm. from Moradini of MDLC, and staff. Okay. Okay. So one of them, right here off the bat, is the community room. So the community room is the room directly next to us, and this is the conference room. Yeah. Okay. The community room is the main programming space for the library. Okay. And then there is also the activity room in the children's department, um, which the children's department does use for some programs, but just so the community room is the main programming space. Okay. And then this is the conference room. So the community room. On the current policy, it says the seating is for 75 people audience style. That is too many people too to many fit people. in that room. Um, and if you have all of the chairs set up and somebody has a presentation and you've got tables and it's, it's just you just, it's not. It's overcrowded. It's yeah. overcrowded, exactly. So I dropped it down um, with input to 50 person capacity. Uh, the room includes tables and chairs, a drop down projector screen, podium, sink and small kitchenette refrigerator only, available for preparation of light refreshments with prior approval. Two, conference room, 12-person capacity, conference tables and chairs, not removable. The library shall follow guidelines set forth by government officials, the town manager, and the library director as to the number of people who will be permitted to attend an event in either the community room or the conference room during an epidemic, pandemic, or public health emergency. That is in our current policy, but that was an amendment at the end. Oh. So I just moved it and, and put it put here it in, yeah. where, we, yep. where we're already discussing yep. um, capacity. Yep. Okay. Uh, meeting room scheduling. Again, I made some significant changes here. Library, library sponsored, and town of East Longmeadow programs and meetings have priority over all outside groups. The library director reserves the right to reschedule confirmed reservations to accommodate library and town library and town programs and events. Okay. In the current one that we have, it had stated once a meeting room has been scheduled, a group having a higher priority level may not override another group's scheduled use of the room unless specifically recommended yeah. by the library director and authorized by the library board of trustees. That's yeah, I, I like this better. So um so I changed that. Love it. Okay. Um, two, meeting rooms may be booked for a maximum of two hours, which includes setup and takedown time. In our current policy, there's no length of time right. set in the policy or the application. So if somebody wants to use one of the rooms, there had been no time frame. And we are a very busy library. Right. And there's a lot of programming that's done by library staff or library sponsored programs. And the town uses these spaces quite a bit, other town departments. So if an outside group wanted to use this space for four or five hours, that would be difficult for the library to accommodate. That's why I like the one above it, because that created a lot of problems. It did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we had school groups or something, and somebody had booked the room. And it, yeah. it, it became unwe it was unwieldy at times. Yeah. Uh, number three, meetings must occur during regular operating library hours. And I list the hours that the library is open. Mm -hmm. um, in the current policy, um, there's a, a, a second piece that says, beginning during li regular library hours and extending beyond the library's closing time by prearrangement through the library director's office at least one week prior to the requested date and time. I do not want a meeting room use to extend beyond the library's regularly scheduled I, I operating hours. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. Then that becomes yeah. we're paying staff additional hours to be here. There has to be several of us that are going to stay and adjust, so um, I took that piece out. And then... Sorry, it might provide some more flexibility if you don't put in our current hours and just say when the library is open as opposed to specifying what those hours are. The reason I put them in, and it, it can always be adjusted later if our library hours should change, but then when we're handing this policy to somebody, then we don't then have to then have, well, what are your hours? It's written right there. Sometimes, however, you do close for professional development, holidays, etc. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering if we might want to either add the oh, specification yep. or... So we, if you are open, but you're having you can professional say development, normally. training, it might be either add something mm -hmm. to specify that. I'm just thinking. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I addressed closures later on, but I did okay. not address professional like professional development. Because basically, you need to have staff here to support what the activities. Basically, right? There's some. So basically, once somebody reserved the, the staff isn't here. Yes. Right. We would not be in the room if an right. outside group is requesting use of the conference room or the community room. Staff are not here. Not in the room. No. Couldn't but you just building. put in something? Yes, but we have to be in the building. building. Right. This has to occur mm-hmm. during, and anyone can be able to come in and out for whatever the meeting is for. Availability, but only during the hours you're open. Yeah, I mean, and couldn't you put in something like subject to availability? Because you're yes, gonna, it's um, you're, you're going to have. I think that would uh, that would be sort of assumed because other people are going to. I mean, if that had been in there. I might have removed that. I just thought it was a little too strict if we I, have the actual my, hours. That was my first thought, too, when I was looking at it. So, so in the, you're so saying leave in it the out. introduction. I'm just saying leave out the specific hours in Section 3. Number 3. And then if they change, you don't have, a, I mean. Although I see what you're saying, Katie, also about not wanting to have to explain yeah. that to people. But yeah. also, if someone is here asking for the policy, the hours are on the door mm-hmm. to the building. Mm-hmm. So, But this, you this know, makes it specific. Know, there, so is a, there was a gate that comes across to shut this suite Yes, it's of still rooms there. Yes. Off from the rest of the library. Oh, and yeah. I'm trying to remember, I was thinking they so, could use it after hours and no staff had to be here. I'm, I'm almost sure we did... Um, people had a program back in the day. Back in the day, purpose did, of that. right? Yeah. Do, right. do you remember that? Time? So, like when voting occurs, and like when voting happened, and it was yeah. at eight a.m. Yes, that's what we did. Yeah, but we but, did this for other meetings. For, so we well, occasionally, well, not always, yeah. but so occasionally. Can, so I can use meet in that room. Yeah, occasionally. but th- then that's and they would that's town. Nine o'clock at night. Those are town departments, right. but there were but, there but were others. It, ran, it, it created an issue because those meetings would go past closing time, mm-hmm. and it would still have four or five items on an agenda. Agenda. Mm-hmm. The uh, zoning board of appeals typically met here. They'd go late, mm-hmm. and staff would come and say, "You have to leave. The library's closed." And they said, "Well, we're in the middle of a meeting." We're right. right. So that. Created a conflict a lot. Right. So the staff would have to stay until. Well, the, no, I don't think staff. the staff stayed. Somebody would have to in order to. Well, originally. No, because it was they'd they lock it off. Closed. Yeah. So that the door would lock behind and them. But then the issue was the door didn't actually lock unless somebody pushed it and checked it, mm-hmm. and then yes. the gates stopped coming down. So, and this is all before your time. Right. But that's what I. I'm and then COVID came in and all yeah. that way anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was not a non-issue after that. It yeah. seems yes. less of an issue now. Yeah. But, but I'm just explaining that yeah. that's when the why building the, was built, built. That was one of the reasons. Was the consideration of installing those gates was for the town primarily. Right. To be able officials to be able to use yes. these rooms. Yeah. After library hours. And right. does that this statement prohibit that now? But then again, the library director. Oh, has the say. Okay. You could you could right. say, oh, all right, we can yeah. do that, mm-hmm. and then the head of the, the the chairman of the select committee or whoever could be responsible for making sure the door. Well, was, it would be the town manager now. The town manager. That's right. Would be there. Control, yeah. So the town manager would be responsible for making sure the door is locked, so nobody library staff would have to stay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. What happens if you? No, that, no I, I think I answered my own question. Okay. okay. Um, so, number four, mm-hmm. all meetings must end 15 minutes before the library closes. But yeah, that was an issue, too, because you'd say, well, you have to stop yes. now, and they wouldn't stop, and yeah. you'd have to stop now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next piece is a change as well. Uh, meeting rooms may be reserved up to one month in advance of the meeting date, but not earlier, in order to allow flexibility in the arrangement of library programs. And that's what was happening. Yeah, I'm glad so you put that in there. In the current policy, 
I want to say it's three months, that meeting rooms could be reserved up to three months in advance. But that, it's, it's too far out for the staff in order to be able to plan programming. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm glad um, you put the one month. And then the next is um, no more than four reservations per calendar year may be made by any one group. So in the current policy, it says no more than four reservations per calendar year may be made in advance by any one group. But a group may meet more than four times per calendar year, provided it reapplies on a monthly basis after its fourth consecutive meeting. Mm -hmm. I just took that out because we're not, we don't have a lot of meeting spaces. Right. We don't right. have, we're not a library that has four or five, right. six yes. rooms available. These are the this rooms. This is it. Yeah. And, 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 and there's a lot of demand. Correct. Yeah. So in order to try to be a little bit more equitable to the outside right. groups that want to use the space, we don't want... We want to just make it more. That makes, is that going to make it difficult for the friends group to meet? No. Okay. As long no. as it doesn't. Because they are a library sponsored okay. or a town. Okay. Do, they fall within that, that library umbrella, kind of that, if right. that makes sense. That, that's good. Okay. I just want to make sure about that. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I don't want to forget that subject to availability. So Nancy, will you remind me of that? Because I want to make sure that that piece is in here somewhere. Subject yeah, to availability. Yeah, it is important. Yes. Guidelines. All meetings shall be free of charge and open to the public. No promotions or sales of services or products, merchandise, materials, or other items are allowed unless such promotions or sales are approved in writing in advance by the library director. The library director may permit the Friends of East Long Meadow Public Library to charge admissions for programs held to benefit the library. Oh, that's good. Okay. Hmm. Two, meeting room reservations must be made by written application and submitted to the library director or designee at least one week in advance of the requested meeting date. Three, application for East Long Meadow Public Library meeting room use and release of all claims forms must be completed in full. Applicants will be given the behavior and safe child policies. Can you, I'm sorry, I left out the word child. And number three, the third, cent the third line down should say yeah. safe child policies. Groups are responsible to abide by all library policies, which are listed on the library's website at eastlongmeadowlibrary.org. No, don't be mm -hmm. Got it there. <laughs> Number four, applications must be submitted by a person 18 years or older who is an East Long Meadow resident, will be in attendance at the meeting, and is designated by the requesting group as the person held responsible for the conduct of the meeting, adherence to all regulations, including town bylaws and state and federal laws, and any result in damages to library property. So that's a change there as well, that they need to be an East Long Meadow resident mm -hmm. in 18. The five, the application form includes permission to release the applicant's contact information in the event of public inquiries. That is also new because when patrons either come in or are calling and are asking staff about some yeah, outside meeting that we don't know about, don't really yes. know all the okay. specifics on, nor is it, they need someone They're, to contact. It's not part of their job to be answering information for, for about that. some right. outside group's right. meeting. So I want staff to be able to be like, here's the contact. Yeah, person. of course. And then move I on. agree with you, yeah. Yeah, and then you can find the details out from the person. From that person, that correct. Smell, right. Number six, the library reserves the right to require any organization, group, or individual to obtain and pay for an East Long Meadow police detail if the library director or town manager deems it to be in the interest of public safety. Good. Failure to comply with this requirement will result in immediate cancellation of the scheduled event. That's new. Yeah, that's, that's a that's good, good one too. Yeah. Seven. I think Oops, that's sorry. more likely to be used now than it would have been in the past. Seven. When appropriate, advanced application may not be possible, as in the case of emergency or call meetings. The use of the meeting rooms may be approved at the discretion of the library director or designee. Eight, meeting rooms are not available for use when the library is closed due to inclement weather or other emergency conditions. That's where I could maybe put in professional development or other. I'm going to go on. In the event of an <laughs> unscheduled library closing, a group may reschedule another meeting time. Unscheduled closings will be posted on the library's website. Whenever possible, library staff will notify the contact person of the unscheduled closure. If staff are at home, they might not want to use their personal phones no, to them. call, you know, yeah. or 
if, if somebody who has access, if all the power is out and then you can't email somebody. Yeah. So that's the other piece. So yeah. we will do the best that we can to right. notify the group exactly. that, um, yeah. that there's been a closure, but it's not a guarantee. That's that piece there. So no, don't put it in there. Well, I, it's just, a, it's not unscheduled if it's professional development. Right. My thinking, so I guess, here's it could my. Be, um, you could just add a little note in, if you want to keep the hours, Right. You can add a note saying, um, yeah, that there could there, be additional at the discretion closures. of the library director. There may be changes to the opening hours of the library. Nancy, you had a, a better way of putting it. I think. Subject to availability. Uh, th that's what or, I would put because, first of all, is there room available for use by anybody else? Second of all, is the room available? Uh, it's not available because the library um, itself needs it for in-service or, or whatever. <laughs> because for professional development, we're going to know more than a month out. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Room. And we're going to use that room. It's so it's already booked. And if we're going to have... Uh, like holiday closures. But again, and that's already in our calendar. And then, I mean, months out. So it's, it's subject to availability. It just gives you... A, a, a kind of a amorphous thing that allows you to make necessary changes without violating and you or, or antagonizing any group because that's not your intention. No. Your intention is to be fair to everybody. Correct. But you also know that there may be in service that or things that come up last minute that have to be but addressed. It, it could be a snow closure. You know. You know. What if there's some sort of Right, or power failure, or... Town's yeah, covered in the emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, under yeah. the emergency thing. So it's That's fine. It's, will you no. go... I'm sorry, will you flip back to the first page under introduction in the second line? When not occupied, these rooms are available for public use by application. Should I take out when not occupied and change subject to availability? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Subject to availability, rooms are rooms for public use. Mm, I gotta rework that. I think you should take out when not occupied. Don't leave it. And just and add take subject out to availability. When not occupied and capitalize. These rooms are available for public use by application. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And then yeah, by application. Um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, or intellectual activities subject to well. Well, they're just available. I mean, I think that in there yeah. you're, it's implied that. Yeah, I don't. Think that I think I there it's that implied that if they're if if they're not they're available for public use. Okay. That doesn't mean they're available to everyone every day of the yeah. year. It means that that when they're not you're, occupied. you're all going to be, and if you come in and you want at that time and you've got a, so I, I don't know, subject to, I mean. Um, We're not occupied and subject to availability. I don't understand the when not occupied part of the sentence. Because it's, right, been, if it's booked, because it's not if we're booked if we're in there if yeah there's three programs during the day they're going to be in that room. What about the, this right here? Okay, the East Long Meadow Public Library, li excuse me, yeah, <laughs> East Long Meadow Public Library's meeting rooms are used primarily for for library programs. Okay, these rooms are available for public use by application for charitable, civic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, or intellectual activities. Um, I don't think I think we can just take out when not occupied and leave. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I yeah, would. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then that. all the details. And I are guess fine. you could put in, um, or intellect <coughs> intellectual activity subject to availability. availability. 
Yeah, you can put it at the end. And just you know, put it right at, at the end. end. Subject to availability. Take it out at the beginning Actually, when yeah. not. Because you've already it. said they're used primarily for, yeah. for library programs. And then subject to availability. Right. I like it. I like it, too. And that's why you're filling out the application. Great. Right. Okay, things are going back. Exactly. All right, so we're good with that, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is that it? Yep. Well, no, but no. <laughs> for that piece, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're only on page three. We go oh, okay. way more. All right. Ago. All right. Um, group responsibilities. Back to page three. Okay. Uh, one, notify the library of any cancellations or changes in the group schedule at least 24 hours prior to the scheduled meeting time. Two, set up of chairs, tables, and equipment as needed. Three, report to a library staff member any apparent room or equipment damage prior to using the room in order to avoid being held responsible for the damage. Four, return chairs, tables, and equipment to their original arrangement placement, leaving the room as it was found. Five, clean up all trash and food from the kitchen, at, from the room slash kitchenette, and placing in appropriate containers. Should it be empty? Do we, do, do we have something that said you can't eat in the rooms? No? Mm -mm, no. Okay. We haven't gotten to the food and drink policy yet. <laughs> that's it, it, that's no, another day. Clean up all trash. Yeah. And food, so, so previously, the, the implication is that you can bring with prior approval. With prior approval. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, six. Exit the room at the end of the designated pre-approved meeting time. And then this part is also new. A library staff member will check the room before and after use. Okay. One thing I would. Um, 24 hours, I think, is maybe too limiting for our staff. Do we have, if we say 24 hours and we're closed for 24 business, hours? 24 business hours. Just, because yeah. you don't want to have or, 24. Or even, like, yeah. eight business hours. like Or one business day. Something like that. Because you don't want someone calling I, no, I Sunday can see. morning. Yeah, right. To talk about a Monday... Program. And should I put in there how they should notify us? Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good right idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so and how do you want that to come in? Because now it, it can be email, it could be texting, mm -hmm. it could be... So I like the one business day. Yeah. Carrier pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they, you know, they could... Leave a voicemail. I mean, shouldn't there be something that some there has to be some immediate response because? Well, I want to structure it so that they they don't expect an immediate response. Right via email. Staff. So okay. I want them to send right. an email to the general. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, to, to play that out, right, if they want to change the schedule, someone else might have the room booked right. at right. that time, so we don't want them to assume that they can just send it off over the wall and everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. That's true. They may be asked to reapply. <laughs> uh, conditions of use. One, library staff must have access to the meeting room at all times. Two, activities for minors age 17 and under must be supervised at a ratio of one responsible adult per 15 minors. Three, the library is not responsible for damage to or loss of equipment, supplies, displays, or display materials, or other items left behind or unattended, either before, during, or after an event. Four, the applicant takes responsibility for any damage to the library or its equipment caused by or resulting from the applicant's use of the room. Five, Items may not be affixed to the walls, trim, windows, or doors. Six, permission for a group to meet at the library does not constitute or imply an endorsement of policies, beliefs, practices, or programs by the East Longmeadow Public Library, library staff, or the town of East Longmeadow. Seven, all publicity, such as advertisements, announcements, press releases, flyers, electronic postings, etc., relating to non-library-sponsored meetings must state the following. A, the meeting event is not sponsored by the East Long Meadow Public Library. B, the meeting event held in the library does not constitute an endorsement by the library, board of library trustees, and or town of East Long Meadow of the group's policies, 
beliefs, practices, or programs. Eight, the library director reserves the right to revoke the privilege of an organization during the program and or for any future use of the library meeting rooms when it has been determined that there has been a misrepresentation by the organization of its stated purpose for a given meeting or for non-compliance with the meeting room policy. Okay. Organization, should it be group? I feel like I've used group everywhere else. Anybody have, any, somebody have any thoughts on that? I feel like it's group. Where does this have thoughts on it? Well, it's groups, policies. We could say, we usually say, I think, group or individual. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, we should change that. Well, in six it says, the library reserves the right to require any organization, group, or individual. Groups are responsible. I would just change it to group, group, group whatever it said, the most expansive, which because is because you get the headline here group, group responsibilities, right. Instead of what did you say? I'm sorry. Just that it should be the most expansive that we have, right? So individual, group, or organization. Oh, so put all three. Or take out one from the others. Because <laughs> so here, here it says group responsibilities, so it doesn't say organizations' responsibilities. But other places it, it does. does. Right. So we need to either so take either that have out. To do or add so should I add individual, group, or organization responsibility? Yeah, I think so. That's what I would do, and then that would cover it. Is there, a, in the appeal process, is there a time period for that appeal? I'm not there yet. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. That's a great question. Do we have to have an appeal process? We should have an appeal process, yes. We don't currently have one. No. But that was the guidance, is to include an appeal process. Okay. I'd have, I, I mean, I'd, I'd have maybe some kind of time period for which they have. Yeah. yeah. You mean, so we have time to meet and make a decision? So, right, I mean, well, they have to file, file it within a certain period of time. At least two weeks prior to the request. You know, meeting. like 10 days or something, if, if they want to. So this is where it's going to get tricky. Yes, yeah, because, because, because they have to, one. it has to be, they have to apply a week before their requested date, but no further out than a month. Oh, right. Okay. So they have, like, that three-week period. But if they if they wait until that one, one week, week out, then they don't get an appeal process because they won't have time for it. Yeah, but that I don't know how that would work because people who are within the application period but they're at the end of the application period, then they don't have the ten days or whatever. So because um, this is what if I'm on vacation? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So and I don't see the application until I get back. Yeah. Right. 30 days to file? Because they're not going to, if you've denied it but for when they're asking for it. Then then if you were on vacation, would it be then put onto the acting? Um, Could be. That's why you have a designee but, language. Right. So that would be a designee. But if, if there is, I guess it would kick up to the town manager. If yeah. there was questions yeah. about whether or not. Or maybe I guess kick maybe to the what we manager. need to do is not, uh, we don't have an appeal procedure so because usually you, you want to give yes you can appeal but you can't appeal six months after right 
just to cause problems or to create. You so, know. and then you have to have time. Too, you have to have time for the board to meet too. So we were told we have to have an appeal process based on the work that you've already done. But I can't hear you. We were told we have to do an, an appeal, appeal process. process. Did they provide any additional guidance about what that might look like? Not yet. No. This is why we're still. This is why this is taking so long mm. because I need to. Yeah. Yeah, see yeah and you do have to. I mean, in order to make that um, have any um, credibility, you got to have an appeal process. Right. You know. But uh -huh. but is it like two days or can it be a shorter period and can it be just in writing or by emails or? Well, you can, oh, I see what you're saying. The, the, the appeal, I mean, the, the application period was denied. Is, is seven days. You can't, you, you, have to, you have to request. At least seven days in advance. At least seven days in advance. So if you request seven days in advance. And get denied. And you get denied. Then you can. Then I don't know, how do you have it? Because then they can appeal to have it at a future date. Okay. Not that that date oh, that they're yeah, requesting. The oh, okay, that makes a difference. But it would be that they would. So, so you could, why would it be, who's going to make, who's going to hear the appeal? The Board of Trustees? Mm -hmm. It says, it says. Well, that's the other piece I have to figure the out. The library director and the, the Board, board of Trustees. trustees should, but it could be it the would, library director and the town manager. It yeah. might be right. that and not yeah. the Board of Trustees. Okay, and yeah. then, then you should talk to those people. But if it's the Board of Trustees at the next, must appeal uh, 10 days before or whatever, before the, the, the um, subsequent um, trustees meeting. Okay. Something so that, that, that if the trustees are going to hear about it, yeah. and, and you need it, I, that, I think that's really not clear enough. I think you need, mm -hmm. you need a reference to an appeal process, and this is what the appeal process is. I think you're going to have to work on that. Yep. Yeah. They probably would need, can we require that they come to speak at our next meeting? If we might not want that, though. No. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it might be. They can provide public comment. But then I mean, we're not responding to that public right. comment. Oh, right. Yeah. Do you see that? We got to see think that. About, yeah. think, think about the <laughs> reconsideration of materials. They have to fill right. out that entire right. form right. that comes to us. Then we review it, and then we make a decision, and then we notify them. Okay. We're not asking them to come in so, and be so a part that, of that so, conversation. So would they the like then have to to uh, send that appeal to the library director and each member of the board of trustees in writing, and then we review that's, it? See, that's the, that's the that's piece the we thing. have to. We need to know why they're appealing. I mean, yes, they're appealing because they feel they they um, illegally or whatever were denied right. access okay but then what is their basis for, for other than just plain denial i mean we should model it after the book reconsideration process uh, yeah is, that may have be, you read the policy yes, yes. how but does this denial not right exactly not conform right to the policy yeah basically explain explain yourself that that's right. well that's and that's what an appeal i mean you know you just don't appeal because i don't like it you have to have some kind of in yeah. in, in the law you have to show and does the appeal have to come to the board of trustees or should it should it maybe be simplified and just go to the library director and or the t and the town manager I can yeah. imagine the complaint would be that the library director denied the yeah, initial yeah. request. So they want yeah. So how is this an appeal, appeal if it's going back to the library director? Right. So the so manager right. wants to take it, then yeah. I, I think that's that's because going to take otherwise, a lot of thought. Yeah. To get that because you need to have a a process. And you need to have timelines for that process because otherwise it'll go on forever. Mm -hmm. And 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 also you want to make sure they're legitimate that you know they the because you're, this is public space, and everybody's entitled to it. So. Right, and that's you know, and, and that's, are there other are there other um, other library policies out there that that have addressed the appeal process in their policy? In the ones that I have been looking at, I have not come across the appeal yet. process yet. So they why do don't have, they have to have they an don't appeal have, process? I think they think they do. We not. do not. We do not currently have one. Oh yeah. Do you see what I'm okay. saying? So okay. this is part of like, hey. 
you need to update your policies. Okay, yeah. I get because it. Because no. you don't have an appeal process. Yeah, I so see that's that. where we're now starting to. Okay. So we might be groundbreaking here. And that may, <laughs> and that may, and that, you know, that may, um, especially with, I think today we're facing issues we didn't have before face in the Correct. same way in the past. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and you this want to be fair to everybody. Well, that's just it. And, and we want to make sure right. that the meeting room is right. used for exactly. the intended purpose. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. That was all really helpful. Exactly. I'm going, I mean, eventually, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Are, we, are we good? This is why, yeah. we, when I had said, sure. I'm looking for input, I'm not ready. This might take a few months. Oh, because oh, this yeah. is, oh, I absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and again, all policies are, they can be amended. Oh, and yes. changed as things right. change, so we can do exactly. that. And they need to be. Right. Um, can I ask an, another question sure. about this sure. before we move on? I'm sorry. Yeah. So if you look at page, and there's this, this is not done yet. So I'm okay. sorry, yeah. we're not done. Yeah. There's right. still several more pages. All right. Um, sorry, it's only 40, so I just want to be mindful of the time. Do you see how many approved, amended, 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 amended? Right. How many do we actually have to keep? Because as we're making these updates to the yeah, policies, I've been leaving them, but how many should we have? What does the retention schedule say? Great question. I don't, I don't think have you have to. There, I, I don't know what off the top of my head. Oh, do. Are, are there is so usually there's like a superseded right plus seven yeah. years. Yes, exactly. exactly. So I would say. All right, so let me find out that. Cross off everything. Oh, so we just did it June 2023. Oh, we're we're doing, yeah, that's we're doing it right now. Yeah, we're doing that, it. That we're just, we're, reviewed. Yes. Yeah, but that's a long period of time. From 2014 to 2023, right. that's a different century. Adam. Don't you have to just keep a couple? Depends on what the rank is. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, look, keep, I'll look at that. I would just keep 2018 and get rid of the rest. Well, if it's seven years, that's what I got to Oh, that yeah. sounds good. Seven yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. seven years. So I'm sure, yeah. it must be documented. <laughs> yeah, I have the retention documents. That's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so I'll look at yeah. that. All right, so page five um, application for East Long Meadow Public Library meeting room use. The date of the application, the meeting date, the meeting time, anticipated attendance, room requested. Purpose of the meeting, so they have to check what's the purpose of their meeting. Meeting description, special requests, name of the organization, person responsible contact information, name, phone number, email address, address, and then please sign and return the application to, and then meeting rooms are not officially booked until you receive a confirmation from the library. Yeah. Do, do, do we have on this one application? Okay, do, where it says purpose of the meeting, have we defined some of these things? That's their job. They tell us what's but, the purpose of their okay. meeting. They, no, but they check off civic and they check off. Could there be an other? And then, I mean, how? I had other and I removed it. Okay, because you think this covers everything? Oh, these are highly. And they're broad. I mean, they're, they're not, that's enough. Broad but enough. that's what we have on, in the introduction. This is this is what the meeting room use is for. Okay. Okay. So, okay. And so again, okay, could, if they then come and say, "Why did you deny my application?" Well, did it meet one of these requirements? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. other others pretty. Big. It's kind of so it has to be. I guess this is what my my question is. Please. We know what a charitable is because you you described to us what mm -hmm. it is, but it has to be a civic, cultural, educational, or intellectual reason. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can't. You can't use this meeting room. It can't so be like, a, It can't I, be a private individual coming to have a birthday party. Yeah, right, okay, right, right, right. Because it has to be free and open to the public. public. Anyone can has to be able to walk in and, and be and able to attend, attend that meeting. meeting. It could be okay. my birthday party. You can bring anything you want. But that's no. <laughs> yeah. But that's no, not no, the no, intent. No, no, that's, no, no, that's okay. That's good. Room. Does that, that make sense? That's clear, and, and that's what would happen. So, yes. Okay. So I have read the attached meeting room policy, behavior policy, safe child policy, and re release of all claims and agree to abide by the terms. Thank you. I also agree to allow library staff to provide my contact information in the event of public inquiries. And then they sign, and then they check here if they would like a photocopy of this signed confirmed application. 
And then just a reminder, the person reserving the meeting room must be in attendance at the meeting and will be held responsible for enemy damages incurred and as described in the meeting room policy guidelines and application. Now, should, should for library use only, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Suppose there is a, an appeal. Mm -hmm. Should we? Should there be a reference there, date of appeal, or oh, the application received the, the the date can't either confirmed or denied. Yeah, that's what I would do. Okay, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. And there you, there you can you get all these amendments approved. Yes, to again, there's a lot of them. And then the next page, this release of all claims, um, the only changes I made to this page were to update where it said East Long Meadow Library, I changed it to East Long Meadow Public, Public Library. library. Okay. Right. If it said the board, I changed it to the Board of Library Trustees. Trustees. Okay. Right. So those were the only changes. <clears throat> So that, for so that, so everything else was what it had been. So the assumption is this. that do you know have you have any idea how long this release has been in existence? No. Okay. So the assumption is that this is a prior release and that um, it's it, it's been looked at by your legal uh, the town manager. The town the manager. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. Only question, please. The above information was verified. Mm -hmm. What are we? This is like just the first time I've seen. Um, the, this check mark means that this person who filled it out was a town official, town employee, or library patron. Mm -hmm. And this is their driver's license number. I'm just that's, asking. That's the that's, intent of that part. But I wonder if we should take out the town official, town employee. I think it just means that, that they're trying to verify that the person who signed actually is the person. Just in who it, who yeah. it is. So it's basically who like, did we check are. their identification? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we should cross out um, town official, town employee, and library patron. There's no way for us to prove. They don't have to be a patron. They don't have to either. be a library patron. They do not. No. 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 We they just need to be need a resident. To say we checked their ID and it was a driver's license or other form of ID, right? That's yes. the intent of this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Your own permit. So <laughs> cross out that top town official, t town employee, library patron. I think so. Yeah, I think so. If too. that's the intent of the section, then yes. So that. Okay. I, I, but how I, are we going to do this form? Well, if I mean, they mail it, it in. It, it, we're asking them to mail in the form. Are Sorry. you? I mean, are you really the name the individual that the individual who is representative of that particular civic group or whatever? Right. Okay. How do we know it's a le it's legitimate group and that that or does it matter? Doesn't matter really, does mm -hmm. it? If well, they say it's it, civic, then it's civic. What do you mean? I'm sorry. I should not be shaking my head now. Please, please take that. <laughs> well, I, sometimes I just shake my head and I shouldn't. I'm sorry. We're, 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 we're getting a release of all claims from an individual who was named. Um, They're like a, the primary contact AD, person. And that, that person testifies or states that they are the representative of the East Long Medic Civic whatever society. And then he or she is going to take, is going to be responsible for any claims, okay, that, that, that are made. He's going to say, well, I'm, I'm not going to sue the city, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, do they have, is that what they're verifying, that this person is that exactly, is essentially who they say they are and that they are a representative of that particular organization that you are yeah. renting, I mean, not renting, but providing the... They're using it's, the It's going to be responsible yeah. for the room. So, so, so right. somebody's going to have So to, somebody's taking responsibility right. for... And, and how are you going to know that this person is, is who they say they are? Is that, that's so that's why, why they're showing some it, sort of right? identification. Should, shouldn't it say um, a photo ID? So I think, yeah. Nancy, I think what you're getting at is that 
What this, the above information was verified is much too broad. The only thing we're asking people to identify is that the person who signed the form is the person who, who, says who was in front of them, which yes. means they can't actually mail in this form. No, so we should take that part out. Yeah. They have to come in person. And, and, and if we are putting that And that they, in fact, do represent that. Well, that's what I think we can't require our staff to verify that this person actually represents. That's something they have to self-identify. Well, they're signing that that's true. Right. So the person signing the form is signing that, on behalf that of they are the representative. Is right. Them. Our staff member is only verifying that the person who signed the form and that is they're the person the form. who signed the form, not that, that they represent right, that organization. Right. That right. you're right. you're but you're assuming sentence, they're telling you the truth, and as long right. as, yes, but right, we should change then. The above information was verified to be the identity of the person was I, was above verified. was yes. verified by method of driver's license or right whatever. because or otherwise photo, we a would photo, we, official we, photo yeah. identification. Yes, that's 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 because yes, that's because they point. might not right. have a driver's license. They might correct have a yes ID no, or a photo other. ID of some sort. That's the, all. What did you say? The identity of the person listed above was verified. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Someone must have been listening while I was talking. <laughs> that's what no, 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 but see, it does it say the above information was verified. Well, it's not verified because you're not going to find out whether right. um, John Jones is really the representative. Uh, you're going to assume that. We he, only he verify. Is. Probably and me. that's the same that John, John, John is John. He roams around. Right. Right. Sorry, Daddy's. Yes. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm out of steam. I know. I'm, this is a big one. Every ten minutes. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah. It's just the friends left. Ah. It's your last page. It's the very bottom. Do you want me to read it? I want someone to read it. Anyone else want to volunteer? Or I'll read, I read it. it. A report to the Library of Trustees dated June 5th, 2023. The Friends held its most recent meeting on June 5th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. in the library's community room. Prior to the meeting, the Friends gathered at 5.30 p.m. and enjoyed its traditional Potluck, sucker, potluck supper that always takes place prior to our two-month recess during the month of July and August. On the agenda was Library Director Kate McGonigal's unprecedented invitation to the Friends to set up and staff a table at the summer reading program. Find Your Voice kickoff event on Tuesday, June 13. Upon accepting our invite, I noted that since April of 2019, the Friends membership has declined by over 100 individuals. This would be an opportunity to become more visible in the community. I assume the disruption caused by the pandemic probably played a major role in the decrease of members. Since the June 5th meeting, Ann Page and I did represent the Friends at the kickoff event. Although the Friends do have a website, there's nothing that can take the place of having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with individuals. And yes, the few people who did drop by our table were excited and shared how much they loved our library and outstanding staff. I wish to thank Kate for providing us the opportunity to attend the summer reading kickoff event and look forward to participating next year. Now that we have had that experience, I asked Kate if we could be present at the National Night Out event scheduled for Tuesday, August 1st. Kate has expressed a willingness to share some space at the library's table with us, and I am looking forward to participating. Kate distributed an article entitled Mass Library Organization Stand with Librarians Against Censorship and Intolerance. 
There was discussion by members on the topic of censorship and what can be done to stop or slow down these challenges that are interfering with everyone's First Amendment rights. Finally, although there will be no formal meetings during the summer months, communication lines are always open. We look forward to the arrival of the new furniture for the teen area in the library. Respectfully submitted, Diane Tiago, President. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's excellent. That's excellent. The next meeting is uh, July 19th, unless we change it. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs>